This West Virginia-based firm secured a courtroom victory against a care facility for disabled children. Congratulations to Bailey and Glasser. Hi there, my name is Tasha Norman. I am the executive editor of ALM's Global Newsroom and the Young Professionals Network. I'm here at the Elite Trial Lawyers with the National Law Journal. And I'm also here with Sharon Iskra from Bailey Glasser. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you, Tasha. So your firm is a finalist in the disability rights category. Can you tell me a little bit about why that's so important and what that means to you? Yes, I lead the institutional abuse and neglect practice within Bailey Glasser. So that encompasses um, physical, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, bullying, disability-based abuse of children uh, and adults of all ages. Talking about disability mm. and the rights of plaintiffs, what are the priorities? Well, anytime you're representing folks in these situations, you're raising up someone who's been beaten down, mm. someone who's been marginalized, someone who's been disregarded, uh, their rights have been trampled, been mistreated. And so from the beginning, it's important to recognize you need to raise them up. We spend a lot of time getting to know our clients and addressing their fears, um, learning. Uh, we can't begin to tell their story until they can first talk to us and tell us their story. And so we um, need to know what, what are their fears about the litigation process. Um, how can we make them comfortable in the courtroom and tell their story? Uh, what specific maybe transportation needs, maybe um, speech barriers, uh, maybe mental disabilities that we need to deal with um, and make them at home in our environment of yeah. the courtroom. How important is it for a lawyer to implement and to use novel strategies when trying a case? Every case is unique. Every client is unique. The needs are unique and the obstacles are unique. And so um, you've really got to mastermind that. You have to mastermind how to tell your client's story. You have to strategize and anticipate the defenses and work around those. We represented two nonverbal children who were abused by staff um, at a behavioral health facility. And now that was being people, children being hurt by the very people who were supposed to be helping them and who swore um, in making us their zero offer before trial that we would never prove that. No one would ever believe us and that we couldn't, just simply couldn't tell that story because our kids couldn't talk. And so we had to strategize how to tell our client's story when our children couldn't even take the stand. We asked if we could bring our children in and put them uh, just for a five minute interview in front of the jury box. Uh, just with me, no oath, but just to bring them in so the jury would understand why these children were not able to tell and make a report of what had been done to them. Sharon, to be an outstanding attorney, I know you have to use emotional intelligence. Can you tell me a little bit about how you can do that? Emotional intelligence is critical in these cases, um, especially when you have disabled children. Um, you know, you're talking about people whose rights have been violated. Um, that's one of the, just the most fulfilling things that we can do as lawyers is not only fix someone's pocketbook mm -hmm. and, and make that whole, but bring everything to light and make that person whole again. Thank you so much for sharing your story and congratulations on being a finalist. Well, thank you, Tasha. Mm -hmm. My pleasure.